Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Harika. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how, uh, a, uh, you know, a new feature of UiPath forms, which is, you know, how we can integrate custom HTML uh, forms also into UiPath forms. So that also can be done apart from uh, what we can see, which is a regular UI forms. So I will show you how we can do. But before to that, I'll just quickly run you through the demo of what we're going to learn in the next 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So so I'll just uh, run this workflow and I will show you uh, what we will recreate and how, what you will learn. Okay. So if you see here, uh, the form says this, right? So this is basically a HTML form that uh, we we can create by ourselves. Okay. We don't really need to, uh, if you are good at HTML or if you already have a HTML form in place, that also you can integrate into UiPath forms, okay? Uh, so how we can do that? So let's say if, the, if your form is looking something like this and it has the dynamic values coming over here, which is, you know, generating after every single second. So here I can see the current date time is 054-2023 and the time is changing. The seconds are changing after every single second. And once I say, okay, the seconds, the time is going to freeze. Okay. And when I say cancel, the form is going to get closed. So this is a small use case. The only uh, major idea behind showcasing this use case is how we can integrate the custom HTML forms also into our UiPath forms and uh, how we can, you know, trigger like certain actions I showed you, right? Clicking on OK has triggered some event like, you know, freezing the time on the form and canceling it uh, has triggered one more event so in that way if you if you wanted to you know uh, provide in some triggers also we can do that particular thing by using uipath apis so what it all takes and how we can do uh, i will explain everything from the scratch step by step throughout this video so without any ado let's get into the video but before to that if you're watching my channel for the first time i'm harika and i do videos on uipath and robocop if uh, there are a lot of videos on chatbot also because I was exploring about it recently and I post a lot of uh, integrations with chatbot as well. So you can check out those videos on my channel. Uh, go to playlist and check them out. And if you find the videos useful and informative, do like them and also share across your circle. And also let me know your valuable comments in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. Please don't hesitate to comment. That gives me a lot of motivation. So without any ado, let's get into the video and see a step-by-step -step tutorial of how we can recreate this whole workflow. So yes, for that, uh, what I'm going to do is, so let's try to, uh, okay, before to that, I will take you to the HTML form. <clears throat> so let's say if this is your form, this looks like this, okay? The uh, ideal form would look like this. It has some informations, two buttons, and this one uh, has some, date, uh, some, you know, some label with the data that, you know, this N by A is something that, that is a place where I want my dynamic data to go and sit in, okay? So this is how my ideal form looks like, the HTML form looks like. So I will show you what is there inside that form, okay? So this is the form, okay? And um, this particular form has, you know, some metadata, like what is the ID of the form, display name and the kind and all. And after that, we have the actual HTML. Like, you know, we know it, right? The styling, we do it. Uh, so let's say you can see here, it has some green color, orange color, and the text and all some different stylings we have, right? So all the styling you can do over here by using text slash CSS, uh, CSS by uh, till here for the styling part. Let's come to JavaScript, okay? So till here, we have our JavaScript where we are using certain APIs, okay? UiPath APIs. So what are those APIs here, here if you see, uh, we just named it as UiPath API. So here, if you see, we are having three functions, okay, for getting the value from that uh, form. And if you want to set some value, we have that. And also for, you know, uh, for sending the message. So let's say if you are having any trigger, okay, so if you perform any click or uh, something like that, uh, if, if you trigger something in the form, then you have to send a message, right? So for that, so we don't, we have different, different things. So uh, these are the three different APIs we have. So now what I'm doing is I'm just showcasing you this video, but in the next video, I will try to show you uh, 
a different use case like you know how we can send the value send the values and get the values also i will show you uh, in the next video okay but for now i will show you this small like let's go step by step okay <clears throat> After that, what are we doing here is uh, we are creating a script. Uh, if you see here, for um, <clears throat> you know, when you click on OK, what needs to be done? When you click on cancel, what needs to be done? So that is the thing. OK, like we are sending a message like OK clicked. OK, this is something like a, consider it like a, a message that we're sending and for cancel clicked. So this is basically if you already have a requirement in place, if you have a JavaScript or, you know, HTML in place, you can utilize this one. Okay. And also um, this one. So I will give you this whole code. You can just copy and paste it in, in as a HTML and you can just run it. It will work. And I'll tell you how we can customize this based on a different use case going further because right now just use it as it is and don't, don't get too overwhelmed with this uh, because we will go step by step. Okay. And then, let's let's go here only one thing that you have to remember is here the id okay this is i'm taking it as a time uh okay which is given as n a right so this value is dynamic all the time i'll tell you how we will change this so close it after that let's go to our forms and what i'm going to do here is okay i will show you uh step by step i told you i'll show step by step right so let's create everything from the scratch and here I will tell show form. Okay, let's pull in show form. So what is my form name? Form.html, right? Form.html, right? So just we wanted to showcase that form. This will showcase that particular form, okay? And after once after that form is, uh, you know, created, what I'm going to do, uh, I mean, like when we are showing. So the next step I told you is if from the previous videos, we were keep on following, which is run local triggers. This will keep on monitoring whatever the events that are happening on the form. Based on that, it will trigger a certain event or action. Okay. So we are running the local triggers. So what, what is the first thing that we observed in the form? The time that was ticking, right? Every time we open the form, there was a ticking, uh, uh, you know, the time was being changed for every second. So for that, what I'm taking is I'm creating a particular workflow. Okay. That is tick every second. Just create that form. Th that workflow. Okay. So after that, what we can do is uh, we wanted to repeat that particular uh, action to be triggered every second. So, right, we have to do repeat trigger. So, at what interval we want it to trigger for every one second. And after it's repeating, what we want to, uh, wanted to display, we wanted to send some message, right? So, set form values take set form values and in the form dot html we wanted to mention what is the argument i told you to remember the argument right which is time and right i'll show you here once again so if you remember i told you to take this time right this is the id this will keep on changing uh, dynamically as and when this particular value is showing okay because we are repeating the trigger every one second so we are sending that value so once after that value has been sent we will uh, you know we, we will use this so before to that what i will do is i will just uh, delete my earlier trigger okay so it is fine um just we will Go to main file and we will run the file. Okay. So what it will do here is, if you see, it is keep on showing me the time, right? This is showing me the time for every one second. But now let's say after I click on OK, this has to be freezed, right? So this has to be freezed. But it is not freezed because I have to set, uh, you know, the value, right? The um, the message or the send key I have to send, like based on this particular value, it has to be freezed, correct? So that thing I will show you now how we can do it.
I have closed the form, right? So that's why it is showing that way, no, the problem. And after that, go to main. Uh, here, if you see, okay, let's create one more workflow for on clicked or OK clicked, okay? So when I click OK, what I what has to happen? First, uh, we will be taking set form. Okay, so we wanted to set the form values. Sorry, we will not set the form values here, but we will be triggering the forms, right? We will be triggering the forms because uh, I will show you in the forms, uh, whenever we are performing a click, it has to trigger some event, right? So what is the form form.html? What is the event? Like we are sending a message. We are doing particular action, which we wanted to send the message. So event is form message. And what is the message ID here? We have to provide the message ID. So if you see here, uh, I'm clicking OK. So here we have to utilize the API keys value. OK, I'm clicking OK. So what is the key that I'm sending? OK, clicked, right? We are telling that OK is clicked. So what action should happen when you click OK? What should be the action? We want the time to be freezed. So we will disable the trigger, local trigger. So the tick. Uh, every second was happening right so we will disable that okay perfect after that what what is the next thing we will uh, create a new workflow for cancel trigger so by this time you might have understood what is the next step and what we are doing right so we are also triggering the form event and here we are selecting same thing what is the event form message? What is the message that we are sending here? Cancel clicked. Okay. So once after we click cancel, what has to happen? It should uh, stop all the local triggers. So before to stop, what has to happen? It should close the form, right? It should close the form. And it should stop all the local triggers. So which form it has to close form.html. Perfect, right? So now let's run everything together. I will show you what is happening. Okay, so first thing is, okay, form is shown up and we can see the time, right? So what is happening here? here we've come here local triggers and it's gone here and local it is repeating for every second and whenever it is repeating it is showing that particular time right after that what i'm going to do i'm going to click on okay so once after i click on okay this will be triggered and it will disable the local uh, tick every second so that that means the time will be freezed right so what i'm going to do here where is my form Okay, this is my form. I'm saying, okay, so it will freeze. It will disable the local trigger. That means it will disable the tick, tick every second trigger and it will freeze the time. Okay, and after that, what is the next step? I am clicking on the cancel. Okay, once after I click on the cancel, it will close the form and it will stop all the triggers. That means it will end the execution, right? I'll click on cancel. It closed the form and it has ended the execution. So this is what we are doing. Uh, so with respect to customizing the HTML and using the JavaScript uh, in order to call the APIs and all, I will explain you more detailedly with a very uh, another new example because this is something that I'm utilizing that's there in the uh, UiPath Academy. Uh, sorry, on the document page. <coughs> Excuse me. So going forward, I will create a one more new HTML, which would be a little more easy and also, you know, uh, can be accessible by you, all of you. And also we will see how we can make the API calls uh, and run this uh, using 
uh, you know, uh, uh, studio UI path forms and all. So that is what I will show you clearly in the next video. So if you like this video and if you wanted to recreate this, do let me know in the comments and also like the videos. Please uh, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll get the video as soon as I upload them. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you with an, another new video next time. Thank <laughs> you.